uh, the most obvious trigger would be estrogen withdrawal, and that's where falling estrogen levels at the time of menstruation actually trigger migraine, and those migraines are called menstrual migraine. But there probably are a number of different hormonal changes which can actually trigger migraine. Uh, for example, falls in estrogen that occur uh, mid-cycle in some subgroups of women might trigger, or might trigger migraine headaches, and there could be other changes that might actually be preventative. The umbrella of high estrogen and progesterone that occur in the mid-luteal phase may actually be preventative for some women. So it really depends upon the change and at what point in the menstrual cycle in terms of what effect the hormones might have on migraine headache. Well, to answer that, you really have to first talk about the stroke risk of oral contraceptives. Uh, first of all, uh, migraine headache by itself is a, a very slight risk factor for stroke. In fact, relative risks are roughly about two to two and a half for migraine overall um, for, for stroke. Um, patients that have migraine with aura actually have a higher risk for a stroke than those that have migraine without aura. And, uh, and the, rate, the risk of that is probably about two and a half to three times the general population in a 20 to 50 age group. Now, when you have other risk factors uh, for stroke, like hypertension or smoking, that risk goes up further. And if you um, add oral contraceptives on top of a patient with migraine, the risk might go up as much as, as eight to 16 times the general population. So there are now are a number of groups that have recommended against using oral contraceptives in patients that have migraine with aura. Um, now there's, there's three. Other people don't agree with that, and they, they, they think that, it's, uh, that the risk is still tiny uh, with, in patients that have migraine with aura and that the risk of an unplanned pregnancy is actually greater than the risk of oral contraceptives even if you have migraine with aura. But, but the official recommendations by the agencies is that we would not use it in patients that have migraine uh, with aura. So what I do is I usually, um, I usually take women, if they, if they want to use oral contraceptives for contraceptive reasons, then I consider them for oral contraceptives. If they have migraine with aura, I tend not to use oral contraceptives in that situation. If they have migraine without aura and they don't have a plethora of vascular risk factors, then I will, uh, I will go ahead and put them on an oral contraceptive and I'll use a monophasic pill as compared to a triphasic where there's a fixed combination of uh, the ethanol estradiol and the progestin, and I'll cycle them every three months so they only have uh, one, menstrual, uh, one menstrual period every three to four, or three to four times a year. And I tend to like, this is just completely anecdotal, the uh, fourth generation progestins, which are the drosperinone um, uh, types of OCPs, because in my, my anecdotal experience, I found that micronores do a bit better.